Welcome to the Welch Review, starring, you know, me, me and the other Welch guy. Um, today we're going to be talking about Princess Mononoke. Which Excellent is, film. Yeah, which is a Miyazaki film, uh, you know, made by Studio Ghibli. Um, and uh, it's got a, got a pretty interesting cast. You want to you wanna give the rundown, at least the American version. Uh, so we have Billy Crudo, or Crudup, however you pronounce that. Um, you have Billy Bob Thornton, you have Minnie Driver, you have Keith David, you have Gillian Anderson. So it's really a, a solid voiced ensemble for this Miyazaki masterpiece. It also happens to be uh, Sam and I, Sam and my, first uh, introduction to Miyazaki movies. Yeah. You know, uh, back in the day, I don't know if you remember, but there used to be this place called Suncoast Video, uh, and our dad would take us there to get rentals, um, and that was, was it your pick? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Uh, no, I remember picking it a few times. So Sam picked it quite a few times. So moving off that, so we got a solid cast and the sultry voice of Keith David. Ooh. We'll be back. Sam, why don't you tell us about the plot of the film? So it's, uh, okay, so the, the film is basically like one big message to like stop polluting the mm -hmm. earth. Uh, and uh, that's again something we can talk about later, but it focuses on uh, the young prince Ashitaka. Uh, he's from like a banished tribe uh, which lives in what appears to be kind of like a northern Edo Japan. Um, and basically, what happens is uh, a giant boar uh, gets poisoned by a lead bullet and then, like, destroy is destroying his town. Um, and that boar becomes like a demon, essentially. Uh, so, while fighting off that boar to protect his sister and his town, Ashitaka gets poisoned by the boar. Right. Uh, and then to cure that, he has to go on this adventure to uh, find the uh, great spirit of the forest, which has the ability to, to like basically heal anything, to cure life or death. Uh, While well, it decides life or death for like well anything that it comes into contact with, um, and it's said that the blood of this great spirit can can basically just heal you. Right. Um, so if he doesn't do this fast enough, it'll kind of just like take over his entire body and then he'll die. Um, so the story is about how he goes to find this uh, this great forest spirit and the different people that he encounters. Uh, the first big character that he encounters, I think it's pronounced Jigo? Or Jigo, G yeah. Yeah. Um, Voiced by Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, I forget his character's name, or, you know, at least the pronunciation. Uh, but basically, he's this little, like, short, fat guy who can run really fast. Uh, and, like, high heel, wooden high heels. Wooden <laughs> high heels, yeah. He's basically wearing, like, like sandal stilts. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's kind of impressive. Um... But uh, Jigo, throughout the entire film, is kind of like um, a conniving character. Absolutely. Like he's, he's kind of just like trying to put his spin on everything and get everything the way that he wants it so that he can achieve his own end goals, which is ultimately uh, to kill the forest spirit uh, so that he can present it to the Emperor. Um, later on, uh, we meet Lady Aboshi of Iron Town and all of the people of Iron Town who are trying to clear away the great forest that way um, they can get at the um, iron ore underneath the mountain. Uh, this is an issue because the great forest spirit lives there with uh, all of you know these giant creatures uh, like like the boar that attacked Ashitaka's home. Um, so uh, the last big character that we come into contact with is uh, the wolf girl San. Uh, who from a young age was like left in the wilderness and raised by wolves, kind of like a Romulus and Ramus story, except without like the demigod part and you know the founding of a city. They you know San uh, is raised by the wolves and then stays with the wolves and fights against the humans to protect the forest. Uh, and then you know eventually her and Ashitaka they kind of fall in love because um, Ashitaka, while he has a goal to heal his arm, is really kind of just trying to bring peace. In between all of these different elements, he doesn't want there to be any conflict in between the forest uh, and humans. He just doesn't want anybody or anything to die. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so there's there's a lot of symbolism 
in the film when it comes to like environmental protection. Absolutely. Um, and then even past that, it has a lot to do with um, Japanese culture, mm -hmm. uh, specifically Shintoism, because the the and this isn't like a well-rounded uh, explanation of, of of Shintoism, but basically the idea is that everything has a spirit. Uh, like everything that you encounter has a spirit uh, and they have their own will and what Ashitaka is trying to do is he's trying to appease uh, those spirits and um, the, the, you know, the people around them so that there isn't any conflict in the world. Um, now in a lot of ways uh, I've heard this or at least I think I've heard this or yep. read it somewhere but this is called uh, Miyazaki's like in a sense Star Wars Right, like uh, there are there are some parallels, you know, um, the force bringing peace to the forest, yeah. right? The balance, okay. You got the Han Leia dynamic where <laughs> I love you, I know, right? Where they they like each other, they don't like each other. You you obviously got the furry counterparts like the wolves and the other animals. Yeah, you know, and you got like uh, the sultry voice of James Earl Jones yeah, versus the the sultry voice of Keith David who narrates and both plays uh, the last of the boars. Keith David plays, um, plays oh, I can't remember the big boar. Basically there's like a really old boar. Uh, I didn't know that he plays yeah, that dude. boar. That's cool. Also uh, Scully from The X-Files. She's the voice of Moro. Okay, that's cool. Julian Anderson yeah, is pretty dope. So Moro is San's mom who's like a giant wolf. Uh, and she's kind of terrifying in every which way you can imagine. Throughout the entire film, she's basically poisoned, but, like, the whole time, she's kicking, like, crazy butt. Like, she does not care. She don't mess around. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, um, so you brought up the parallels, but what was, like, one of your favorite scenes in this film? Um, so, before watching it again for this, you had mentioned that you wanted to do your own version where you dub what, uh, Ashi Ashitaka's Red Elk Yaku, or Yaku, yeah. uh, would be thinking in some moments, so, like, when they do cutaways to the deer, like, to the elk, like, yeah. it's just like, oh, uh, I'm chilling with wolves, pants to the elk, and it's just like, like, oh my god, am I gonna die? Yeah, and, yeah. and I found that really enjoyable because you brought attention to that. But, um, I really enjoy when, you know, Ashitaka is on his journey, right? And he comes across these samurai who are raiding a village. Oh, and, and he's shooting the bow, yeah. Yeah, keep like, going. so he has, like Sam mentioned, his arms infected, right? Like, uh, the, the demon parasite of hate is consuming him. And, um, you know, at this point, he's not sure, like, oh, well, I have superpowers. Well, yes, hate is a strong, strong emotion. And when he sees uh, injustice happening to innocent people, Ashitaka feeds into, uh, you know, his hatred for that, which triggers beast mode. And he just is all like, Phew! one yeah. shot, one kill. And, yeah. like, just, like, shoots somebody's katana that they're holding and just like rips off their arms mm -hmm. with the katana like the, still in its hands and like with that there's another scene where he's being chased by samurai again toward like the like uh, the falling action of the film yeah you know when he's going back to iron town yeah and um or maybe he's leaving iron town but either way he's being chased by these these bad samurai and, uh, again, he activates, you know, demon arm. He shoots one of the rider's heads clean off, and then one of the other dudes on a horse rides away. He's like, nah, I've had enough of that. <laughs> I'm out. I'm, I'm done, dude. Yeah. There's, uh, what is it? Uh, you had brought up, like, Yakol, and, uh, when he's, like, traveling with the wolves, uh, there's a scene that they even, like, go back to and, like, mention how smart Yakol is. Uh, yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, but basically, Ashitaka's like down for the count, and mm -hmm. he's like resting. Um, and um, San is like, "All right, you call. You can leave now. You can go. You're free." Uh, but there's wolves, <laughs> probably pretty close by. So you call's like, "No, nope, I think I'm good right here." So he just like does not leave Ashitaka's side, and then San's like, "Huh, you're a smart one." <laughs> you're a smart. So one. like, low key, San was like. I'm gonna get my brother some dinner. Uh, <laughs> uh, I also really love um, 
these they have like these little like tree spirits called Kodamas. Oh, the ones that just and their heads like rattle. And uh, it's a little spooky, but I like the Kodamas a lot. Mm -hmm. I think that they're cute. If I was ever going to get a tattoo, I'd, I'd get a tattoo of like Kodamas running around my leg. I was just going to bring that up because you yeah. said that way back when. You know, yeah, no, the Kodamas are definitely cute. I think another um, really, like the, the imagery Miyazaki does, like incorporating the spirits like the Kodamas and just like how he gives nature a voice in this movie yeah. is just really really cool and how he shoot the music that's something i really really enjoyed the music of this movie yeah. you know like you feel like you know not that it's a fairy tale but like you feel like you're on a journey like yeah. you are going on a quest like you should buy the soundtrack and jam to it on your cd player like wherever you're going just all right Cool, yeah. we're rolling now, you know? Ghibli soundtracks tend to like clap really hard. So, so yeah. Like, clap. Yeah. Really hard. Um, <laughs> Sorry. That was something. So, uh, hey, um, you, you were asking me about some of my favorite moments now. This is one of your favorite films. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, what, what I guess it's two parters. What is, you know, some of your favorite moments from the movie? And then, like, uh, what makes it one of your favorite films? Well, I actually already went over a few things, but uh, one thing that I did want to add was uh, I really like that the uh, the spirit of the forest is just dear Jesus. <laughs> dear like Jesus. it is, it is an elk with a man face, uh, and it walks on water and heals people. Sometimes it kills things, but normally it heals people. It is just dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Um, and uh, I'm a I'm a pretty big fan of Dear Jesus, <laughs> um, our Lord and Savior, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. Uh, so that's cool. Um, but reasons why it's my favorite film for me it has a lot of nostalgia, but the way that it weaves together multiple different plots mm. at the same time I think is very effective. Um, you know you have the ambitions of Iron Town, you have the hunters, you have uh, the different factions within the. Um, the, the uh, Spirit of the Forest's army, or army, you know, the different animal tribes. Like, the, the apes want to eat the humans to gain their power so that they can fight off the humans. Yep. Uh, the, the wolves just kind of want to protect the forest whenever people come in and they want to kill Lady Eboshi. Uh, the boars are trying to, like, amass a huge boar army to, to run, uh, essentially just run over... Um, Iron Town. Yeah. So, like, the all all of these different plots are, are weaved in together, and at the same time, Ashitaka isn't really ever in a position to to change anything himself. Like, he needs to get these people to work with him to to fix it as a group. Mm -hmm. um, so, not only is he on an adventure, but he also becomes like an ambassador. Um, for all sides at once, which is, uh, I don't know, it's it's an impressive way to st uh, to tell a story. It's not it's not one-sided. There are no uh, bad guys, you know, quote-unquote bad guys. Like, San, in the beginning, is kind of the bad guy because she's trying to murder Ashitaka and, uh, Lady and Lady Eboshi. Lady Eboshi's kind of a bad guy because she's trying to, you know, murder the forest. Uh, dear Jesus is kind of a bad guy because... Uh, at nighttime, he turns into a giant demon, uh, you know? So, like, everybody's kind of a bad guy and a good guy at the same time, except for the samurai, which is important because nobody likes samurai. So, I think, in totality, that's pretty much why I like this film. It's very multifaceted. Uh, and then, additionally, I, uh, I majored in religion, and this movie is very uh, spiritual, at least in... Um, a Shinto-based tradition, uh, and I think that that's that's important as well. I didn't major in; I minored in it. English counts. I can speak it. Yeah, Pretty but cool. so yeah. I don't know. That's that's why it's my favorite film. Solid, man. Yeah. Uh, do you have any final remarks? Uh, final remarks. Again, the sultry voice of Keith David. <laughs> Treat yourself. Treat your ears to something nice, and your eyes will follow. It's pretty fantastic. I think that'll do yeah. it for me. Yeah, no, uh, it's a fantastic film. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. And, um, you know, it's one of, like, 
20 super solid Miyazaki films that you could watch at any given time. But uh, that and Howl Mo Howl's Moving Castle are probably like my top two that I would suggest watching. Oh, and Kiki's Delivery Service. There's, there's a lot of really good ones. Yeah. Kiki's Great, Spirited Away. Hey, the list goes on. Watch this one. This has been the Welch Review. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.